What is up, Leron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. One of the things that I hear people struggle the most with is looking at an object like this, which is a weird amalgam of a defunct engine and a wheelbarrow, and they, they try and figure out how can I get all those details in. And what I wanna show you today is you don't actually need to get all the details in. What you wanna do is go beyond just seeing every small detail and trying to figure out how you can simplify it in a way that will still pass on the message. You could take your time, you could devote more time and effort and patience and get more details in, or if you don't like that kind of thing and you wanna let go and have fun in a looser manner, that's the way to do it, or at least one way to do it. And with that, I have a really cool announcement to make that it relates to that. My Frustration Free Watercolor course is out. Be sure to check it out in the description box below. I'm really excited about this one, and it's especially for that, for letting go, painting loosely, and getting the results you want. So with that being said, let's get started. So in this example, for me, it's all about the simplification, and I'm gonna do my best uh, to convey that to you with uh, this uh, lesson. Uh, first, I do want to draw some perspective lines to help me out with actually drawing the main um, point of interest in this video, which is this uh, defunct engine or whatever it is really, it's beautiful. So just a couple of perspective lines, we'll see how we make use of them, but I do want to put more emphasis on the actual object. So instead of taking up this space, I'm going to have it take up a lot more uh, percentage-wise from my uh, my paper. This line is almost vertical, so here we go like this. I just need to make sure I have enough place uh, around the bottom to, to have all of the details in. Now, I may have exaggerated the perspective a tiny bit. That's fine. Like so. This part gets rounder. And we can We have a nice opportunity to do some warm and cool uh, plays here. That's gonna be very nice, I think. So let's end it here. Let's do this kind of thing just to make sure my proportions are somewhat accurate. Now this foliage here, this little, I don't know, plants, it's all one big piece of something for me. I don't break it off into individual shapes. I just do a bit of details here you see around the edges, but that's pretty much it. It's one lump of uh, of, of plants and that's a better way of treating it than trying to draw every individual leaf It'll kill you. You really there's no chance you'll be able to do that So now for the rest of the details we have the uh, wheels. It's not even tires. It's just wheels So this goes a little further and here we have one wheel and and circles are very challenging to draw sometimes in the right um angle and size so we'll do our best and if it's not perfect that's fine we have another one here and it's touching the edge of this one so that's a good trick for you to know where to draw it same goes for this one at the back here and we have an awful lot of details i'm gonna do my best to get these uh, to look right and to simplify we're gonna have just um the highlights as white i'm gonna use the paper white for all of these highlights okay uh, I'm not gonna do an initial light wash and then another. I'm gonna do an initial light wash, but the uh, these highlights I'm gonna leave white. Okay, uh, so here we have this part at the back. Now, a major part that's interesting here is actually the uh, shadow, the cast shadow. So here's a part of the uh, wheel shadow. We have a couple of other rather prominent shadows around here. Um, there is a huge shadow going through parallel like this feels to me kind of a waste so what I'm gonna do is have a drop a, a shadow cast by this object and then have the major shadow come from the back I don't know if that's gonna be a risk because then I have to make things up we'll see how it goes we'll play it by ear then we have all of these details inside the wheel then the shadow at the back this line doesn't exist, I'll get rid of it maybe later on. This entire section's in the shadow. We have this nice little archway or whatever that is, so kind of like that. And that's pretty much everything we get to put in this painting. I'm not gonna do the other side here, because it'll make this area too thin. There is this shadowy part around the wall, and then there's a window here at the back, a little taller. 
but I think that's pretty much it. And I'm gonna try and get this uh, looking nice here in, in pretty much in uh, one go, two layers probably, paint around the highlights and the different details, play it by ear and hope for the best. So let's get started, mix some paint here. I'm gonna use this large brush. Um, I don't know, that may be a risk, but I wanna have some fun and, and loosen up a bit. So let's do that kind of thing. The background is fairly neutral, so let's just get a bit of a neutral thing going on here. Um, like this. All of this is in the shadow. Now I'm painting around a foliage that's light. Some of it is very light. Let's add a bit of blue here. Just blew it up a little bit. All of this is in the shadow, like so. All of this is one big shadowy shape. Here I'm leaving some highlights and maybe some dry brush for the foliage spilling out of the, the actual thing, however you want to call it. I'm going to warm up the ground a bit. So a bit more red and just warming it up. I need to be mindful of this edge as it's going to dry. So here we go, covering it up. We'll get to this point in just a moment. Uh, to this part, sorry. And here is the shadow coming through here. I will draw it here. I don't know if it's a smart move, but let's do that. And here, and here, kind of cast by this, whatever that is. And I think we're good on that side. Now, let's use a bit more blue on this section and notice how I'm not afraid to travel around the painting. Add some details where I see fit. You have to be able to find the work process that works for you and feel the freedom to do it. So for me here, it means traveling around the, the, the painting. You're working on one section, working on another one. And it's, uh, it's fine to work in one method every single time, but I find that I like to have the freedom to work in multiple different methods if I want to, which is why I strongly advise to work those freedom muscles as well and not just the technique. So here we come to the complex part. Um, so I want to um, paint around these. Let's switch to a smaller brush just for this section here. And let's work our way around that wheel at the front. Let's work our way around this little shape here and around this part. Here we have to close it off. And I think we got the external shape done pretty much. Just this wheel, let's indicate that it's a wheel and it's round around here. And that's pretty much it for this shape. So now let's start indicating the shadowy areas. I'm gonna just work on this one randomly actually. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. So a bit of shadows under the leaves here, a bit more dry brush is what I imagined just to get some kind of a feeling of leaves perhaps, or a texture. And you don't have the luxury of drawing the shapes when you work in this simple manner, so you just have to indicate and hope it reads well. Let's put a bit of yellow in there. Like so. And I don't mind it blending into the blue here, that's fine. Now around the bottom, the blue gets fairly dark, so let's get that thing going around here, see? And then we have the actual uh, shape of the, this thing. So I'm going to start shading um, just according to what I see, just doing the shapes I see. And that's the messy part. That's the part where you just have to go for it. You have no choice. So I'm just putting in the shapes I see here around this wheel. There is this rounded shadow around here, shadows here, a bit of a shadow here. I'm, I'm sorry if this part of the tutorial isn't as useful. Uh, it's just a more difficult stage that you have to play by ear and get used to doing. Uh, but you can see how slowly a three-dimensional shape is starting to get built up. Uh, there is a shadow around here. There is this shadow that's blue underneath the, uh, the actual wagon. I'm going to call this a wagon from now on. And if it's not a wagon, <laughs> we'll have to treated as a wagon, because I said so, and it's my video. <laughs> Just kidding. So here we go, the shadow underneath. 
let's start connecting it all together like so this part doesn't meet fully so that's a good thing here we have this shadow underneath now you want to pay attention to especially the edges of the shadow and make sure that they represent the subject in, a, in an accurate manner. So it's very mechanical, so I want to show all these mechanical details. Now I'm going back to the red for the actual subject itself. So here's a wheel, here's the bottom part of the wheel, here's, there is a shadow underneath it like that, but then there's also the details of the wheel that are visible, a bit of a shadow underneath it, and now we'll take care of this shadowy part right around here. There's a shadow coming through here and try to squint your eyes and that really helps in seeing the shapes more accurately sometimes. Because honestly I have no idea what this will produce. I'm just rendering it as I see it. It's not the best way and if I uh, if I had worked uh, in a more detailed larger piece I'll probably be more careful but here I just want to get the main impression going so hopefully that will be enough for that kind of thing. Okay, You have to remember that for different for varying levels of complexity, you have to have varying levels of uh, sketches. And for me here, this one's all about simplicity. So I don't worry too much about anything else but that. Okay, here we go, a bit of shadows here. Leafs, details, sometimes I'll just use whatever paint I have. Avoid patterns, go random. And I think let's have these two shadows meet in some areas and this the beautiful transition temperature is really also responsible for providing us with an interesting impression there is this foliage or whatever bush in the background that will leave a nice little highlight next to it and then there's the cast shadow of it that's fairly blue so let's blue it up a bit and then cast its shadow around here and um, I think we can take a break, take a pause from this section. Let's go back to the background. Start darkening it up, because that will really help bring out some shapes. So a bit of everything, really. And perhaps I'll rely more on the carbazole violet to get this to look fairly dark. So let's start with this archway here. And I'm considering actually not darkening it as much as I planned, but just darkening this section up and we'll see what to do with the rest. But this is the main part because that's where the, the, the contrast, the strongest contrast is. So I wanna make sure I get these mechanical shapes looking right. This is actually a toothed uh, wheel mechanical part. So let's get that tooth uh, shape in there and around this bush thing, then around this square box shape like so. And hopefully that makes sense, like this. There is a strong shadow here. This entire part is in the shadow. This is a shadow. There is a shadow of the other wheel. There is the shape of the other wheel. That makes a whole lot more sense now. A bit of a shadow in the cast shadow. And funny enough, this is really close to finishing, but I will add a bit of details to the window here. Let's dry brush them. I'm gonna do something interesting. Let's um, let's try and get an interesting effect here. So a bit of a dry brush for the window. Almost dry brush. Like so. Maybe get more paint and then wipe off some of the moisture here on the towel. Now this looks a little better. What I wanna do is I'm gonna darken this area up and with these kinds of paintings you really you either get it or you don't and that's fine because there's such a challenge. So here what I'm going to do is just spray a bit of water on it and help it blend, okay? To show that this is a part of the background. Um, and now we just have to examine the, the main shape and figure out what's missing to get it to maybe read better. Okay, so maybe a heavier shadow underneath this area. Maybe this shape, I need to close it off more accurately. So here we go, like this. Like this also on this side. We have this interesting shadow in the highlight, like so. A bit of a line here. Um, what else? Just squinting my eyes, trying to figure out if I get the shape right. 
I think we're, we actually got most of the shapes right. Now it's just time to add some details in. So a bit of everything, really. Mix it all up in a fairly dry manner. And I'm just going to add these details here on the uh, wheels. Because we kind of missed them the first time around. Then here as well, in the shadow. These are really going to help to showcase this. And you notice how we painted it in a very a la prima way. Even though I didn't necessarily plan for that. Because sometimes the painting just takes you with it. You have to kind of go with what it offers and enjoy it. Like I'm doing now, just I decided to work on this corner again. Strengthen it a bit. And this is what I'm doing. A very spontaneous decision. But I'm happy with it. A few darker touches in the window here at the back. And actually looking back and squinting my eyes, I think something that's missing is just darkening everything here a little tiny bit. Okay, so I'm going to take a risk and do it, and if I mess it up, I mess it up. But we'll give it a try, darkening this up just a tad bit more, okay? This whole area at the back may seem super dark right now, and it does kind of erase the window, but that's fine. We can bring it back later on. Like so, just to get a bit of a stronger contrast with the, this part here. And this rounded shadow at the bottom, I do need to patch up a little, make sure it's right. So here we go. Messed it up. I'm gonna dab this real fast. Come back from the other side, maybe with a smaller brush. So now you see me fixing mistakes on the fly. That's just a part of it. And now it makes a little more sense. And perhaps darkening it now while it's still wet. There is this wall here at the back like so and then the window now it's my chance to get it more accurately like this and now I think the impression is so much better uh, around the bottom here I'm gonna patch it up a little bit also around here that's it here we go uh, a bit of a darker shadow on the you see now I'm just going over it I'm not too worried about you know if I mess things up or if it looks perfect, I'm just trying to figure out what areas could use some touches, okay? And if you, at this point, judge yourself and go, oh, I don't see it or I messed things up, you'll never get it. You have to really give yourself the freedom and time to go over it, find what parts you may have messed up, what parts don't look right. And for example, I put in this, this is beautiful, into the wet and wet, this looks really good. Uh, and then I'm going to add to contrast it some shadows on the the highlighted area here. See? And that looks really nice. Like this. And we pretty much, I think, got it. I don't want to add anything else. This looks good now. Uh, so you can see how very quickly you can create a beautiful impression of what you see. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Um, but I do think it looks excellent. There are a couple of small highlights like the wheel or tire wheel, sorry, inside the wheel. If you lost any of those, like the bottom of this wheel, you can add it up with a, again, the white pen, maybe with a hint of these parts. Maybe there's a highlight on this part or on this part, it's better, more visible, maybe on all of them. So you can definitely do that kind of thing to add some details in. Uh, but overall, this is done. So thank you so much. Now let's wrap it up. So this is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed seeing how you can take an incredibly complex subject, simplify it and still get the message across. And not that I did like the best, the perfectest job. I know that's not a word, uh, the, the best job I could, but this is really good for a first attempt. And this is how I usually uh, approach these kinds of things. I remove all the self judgment and I just focus on what I see, how I can paint it. And then with the more and more attempts you make, it gets better. And a lot of it is to remove that judgment and this is one thing we're definitely working on in the frustration free watercolor course check it out it's a video course i will put a link down below um i hope you enjoyed this uh video this tutorial let me know your thoughts in the comment down below and don't forget if you enjoyed this one don't forget to drop a like and also if you're still not subscribed be sure to subscribe i'm trying to get to and help as many people as i can I want to thank you so much. And as you're watching this, I'm probably in New York. So if you want to, you know, do a meetup, uh, do a painting lesson, 
uh, hit me up. Also, I'm gonna write down the email or something below, uh, or feel free to contact me here in the comments. Hope to see you, and I will talk to you again in the next one real soon.